Cablevision Sports presents the high school football game of the week. Tonight, the Berea Braves take on the Mid Park Meteors. Hi friends, Kenny Rota welcoming you to George Finney Stadium for tonight's big Pioneer Conference matchup between the Berea Braves and the Mid Park Meteors. And joining me as he's done all season long is Matt Underwood. And Matt, uh, we can't say it enough, this is a big game for both schools. Yeah, we've got a lot to sit, sort out here. First of all, let's start with Mid Park. They come in ranked fourth in Division I, Region I. The top four teams go to the playoffs. So what that means, if they win, they pretty much guarantee themselves a spot in the postseason tournament. Now, in terms of the conference, if they win tonight and Brunswick loses, they become the outright Pioneer Conference champions. Now, on the other side of the coin, you got Berea. They come in ranked seventh in Division I, Region I, and if they upset Mid Park, they could gain enough computer points to catapult themselves into postseason play. In terms of the conference, the only shot they have is to win. If Brunswick loses, then the three teams would share the Pioneer Conference championship. So a lot could happen here this evening at Finney Stadium. Now, let's zoom in on some of the key players in tonight's ballgame. First for Mid Park, uh, their starting quarterback, Steve Alessio, uh, went down early in the season, came back, went down again. So that means that the starter tonight will be a sophomore. Yeah, Dave Gardner. That's the bad news, the fact that he is a sophomore. The good news is he's got plenty of game experience. When Alessio went down earlier in the season, he stepped in, led them to a couple of wins, and so therefore he's no stranger to this Mid Park offense. Now for Berea, I think the key player there, as Berea goes, they go as far as Damian Bedell, the tailback will take them. Yeah, he was last year's Pioneer Conference scoring champion. Regardless of the outcome here tonight, he'll be the conference scoring champion again. And the neat thing about Bedell is no matter where they're at on the football field, they're only a short distance from the end zone. So a big game to say the least for both schools here tonight. We'll have the kickoff for you coming up next on the Cablevision Sports Network. Left behind I'm never having any fun Stood up, broken hearted again But I guess Family has been affected by Alzheimer's disease You probably know that so far there is no cure But medical science has made progress In treating some of the most troublesome symptoms Ask your doctor And be sure to take advantage of the support groups and services That can make life for the caregiver a little easier You're not alone for a free booklet that might help you cope a little better with Alzheimer's disease, write the Will Rogers Institute, White Plains, New York. Welcome back to the Cablevision High School Game of the Week. I'm Matt Underwood, who will be bringing you the play-by-play, -play, along with Kenny Rodas, who will be providing the expert analysis this evening. And Kenny, as we mentioned in the pregame, all types of implications. I mean, we could have sat there for maybe another 15, 20 minutes just discussing all of the possibilities based on who wins tonight's football game. Yeah, both of these schools know not only it's a big game for bragging rights during the offseason and a big game, as we mentioned, for the Pioneer Conference Championship, but what everybody sets out to at the beginning of the season to do is not only win your conference, but more importantly, go to the playoffs. And this one definitely has playoff implications. So uh, a big game for a number of reasons, man. Both teams come in 7-2 and two overall, but I suppose if they came in at 2-7 and seven overall, the hype would still be here because it's Berea Mid Park. It's the grindstone game and all that. But yeah, with the, all of the outside implications, there is an added layer of excitement. And you, you almost got the feeling in talking with head coach Ray Radick right there before the uh, opening kickoff that He's a little tense. I mean, he's not tense, maybe intense, I guess is the word. Yeah, I think intense is a better way to put it because normally when you talk to, you know, coach, even if it's before a game, any other team but Berea, he's got a few more words to say and, and his sentences are a little long, but he was short to the point and uh, we just let him go because we, we, knew, we know what type of person he is and we knew that he was ready for this game. He said it's a big game and they're all big games and this one's just as big as uh, the next one, I suppose. We did mention the fact that Steve Alescu is out, will not play. I was just talking to him before the game. He's in a wheelchair right now. He tore his interior cruciate ligament while also uh, breaking his wrist. So he had the double whammy. It, it was on the one play where he was hit high and low and he went down. He's in a wheelchair watching the game and he was uh, sitting there with Brett Collins who also tore his interior cruciate ligament. And he you know, was lost at the beginning of the season. So there are two main players are out with the same injury, but give credit to head coach Ray Radick and the team for enabling the Mid Park Meteors to still compete and compete at a very high level. They're still in first place. Championships te teams have always been based on how deep they are, so Mid Park, yeah, definitely has the depth at the skill positions. I can only imagine 
what those two seniors must feel like, though. Here it is, the, the 10th game, the final game of the season, your, your last season as a high school player. You're playing the biggest game of the year against your arch enemy, and you're only able to sit there and watch it from the sidelines. It's got to be a, a very disturbing feeling for those two guys. And it, it is. You can tell on their faces. And you know what they were talking about? They were talking about when they were playing this year. Uh, yeah, remember that Lakewood game? What yeah. about Valley Forge? You know, when I busted that one off right tackle and went the distance? I mean, they have some good memories, but I, I mean, that's all they have to fall back on now because they have to sit here and watch it on the sidelines instead of maybe being an integral part of the game. Yeah, unfortunately, they're they're reduced to the role of, I don't know, cheerleader. And uh, of course, if, if Mid Park would win, then I don't know, I, I doubt it when you're talking about a knee injury like that, yeah, you're talking the rest of the year, they're not gonna be able to come back. And, and that may be even tougher should they win and go on to the playoffs, because then they would have to sit and watch that as well. Exactly, they are both lost for tonight and for the rest of the year should they make the playoffs. On the other side of the coin, Berea hasn't really suffered uh, injury problems, but as we mentioned early in the season when we came here to Berea to finish stadium to do a game, it, it was a team in transition, a lot of new faces on the front for Berea, but now these guys are experienced. Most of this team is coming back. The key players, however, Damian Bedell and Dan Britton, this is gonna be their final regular season game of their career for the Berea Braves. And a great backfield to have, a tough one to replace next year for head coach Tom Madsey, but he's not thinking about next year, and neither are those two players. They're thinking about one thing, get it done tonight against Mid Park and uh, hope that maybe Brunswick will lose or possibly hope that some of the other teams that are ahead of them in Region 1 will lose, and this might catapult them right into the playoffs. I suppose it is worth mentioning. I mean, by the time this airs, everyone will know, but uh, Judge Burt Griffin ruled this evening in, in favor of the Euclid High School football team. Therefore, they won't have to forfeit any of their games, and I suppose the reason I should mention that is that could have had a bearing on both of these teams. Uh, if, if Euclid would have had to have forfeit seven of their eight wins, then Mid Park would have gone to number four in the region to number three. Berea would have gone from number seven to number six. But as it stands, that's not going to happen. No, and, and I don't think either of these teams were really concerned with that, not because of the caliber of game this one is tonight. All they've had on their mind is, hey, if we win tonight, Hopefully the rest of the things will take care of themselves. We're not worrying about anything else but Berea or Mid Park. Yeah, coming into this game, you almost have the sense that Mid Park is really in the driver's seat. Berea needs to win, and then they need to get some help. That's exactly right, Matt. And as we see here tonight, almost a packed stadium. This place holds, I think, 8,100 people. And I'm sure we're well over uh, the 7,500 mark, including the bands from both sides. So it's not only a big game for the players, but it's a big game for both of these schools and both of, you know their parents and the cities and everything. Berea, of course, located in the city of Berea, Mid Park and Middle, you know, Middleburg Heights and some of Brook Park. So we've got a lot of uh, local flavor involved with tonight's game. It's gotta be odd for Berea. You play 70% of your games here at Finney Stadium as the home team, but tonight you come in as the visiting team. And there you see quarterback Steve Alescu and Brett Collins, the outstanding tailback. And at the beginning of the year, they had high hopes, but right now, as you can tell by the look on Alescu's face there, he, all he can do is just sit and watch and hope for the best. And with that, we're just about ready to get it underway. Berea will kick off to Mid Park. And we are underway. A squibbing kick downfield taken by one of the up men. That's Puturino. And he is tripped up before he gets to the 30 yard line. And the Mid Park Meteors will have it first and 10 on offense. Mark Gerald made the special teams tackle there for Berea. So uh, not, a, not a bad way to start the game if you're Mid Park getting the ball out near your 30 yard line. Excellent field position and conditions. No rain here this evening. A little windy, but that's about it. It threatened earlier, but the, the rains have held off, and we're ready to, to play a, uh, what we think is going to be a great football game. Dave Gardner, the sophomore quarterback, under center. And turns and hands off. First play of the game to the fullback, Dave Sliman. Right up the middle, he gets out to the 30-yard line. A gain of two, and it'll bring up second down and eight. And all, all of a sudden, oh, I thought Mid Park was going to come out with a little hurry-up look but now they will retreat and go to the huddle. And we'll get a look here shortly at the, the starting lineups, both on offense and defense, and there's the offense. Gardner, the quarterback, Bielik and Slime in the fullbacks, and you'll see Petrino, Driscoll, and some other wideouts in there. And there's the guys up front, Seymour anchors that line at center. Second down and eight, just underway. Here's a quick pitch to Bielik, coming near side. He'll cross the 30, 
And he'll be knocked down at about the 33-yard line. In on the stop for Berea was number 22, Lyle Biggs. He plays the monster back in that defensive scheme for the Braves. And he came up big there, let me tell you, because Bielek was looking to cut it back inside and maybe pick up some more yardage, but Biggs able to uh, cut him off at the pass. You see the Braves' defense. So Stolo, Satnik, Hanchar, Squires, and Boone up front. They play that 5-2 with Kupek and Mucklow, the linebackers, in that defense. Mucklow, of course, one of the seniors. And now on third and five, here is Dave Sliman off the left side, finding the going very tough. He'll be stopped well short of the first down. And so for Midpark, it appears, though, it's going to be three and out in our first series of the football game. And dropping back deep for the Braves, the ever-dangerous Damian Bedell along with Derek Johnson. Two very quick and speedy return men back for the Braves, and they'll hope to uh, make something happen here all night long on special teams. Mike Court does the kicking for Midpark, and he gets a pretty decent kick away. And this will be Derek Johnson trying to go to his left, but he's hemmed in, and he will go down. Excellent special teams play there. Bill Kelly made the initial hit, and then finally Frank Filigano, I believe that's the way it's pronounced, I'm not sure, but he's the one who dropped him uh, on the sideline, so good coverage there by the special teams from Midpark. So Berea puts it in play, first and 10. Their first offensive series of the football game, and Dan Britton will be the lone setback. Now Damian Bedell comes in motion to the near side, and on first down, Todd James wants to throw. He steps up, and he's nailed at the 36-yard line by number 51, Bill Kelly. Bill Kelly, an outstanding ball player on this Midpark team. We've called his number uh, a couple of times here uh, this year because we've covered Midpark two games, and each game he's played a fantastic game. And these guys, James Bedell and Britton, along with McClarity, Gooden, and Jones, going to have to watch out for Kelly and a number of the other uh, defensive players for Midpark as you see Kayser, the center there, that anchors that line. And that offensive line will have to do a good job protecting Ty James when and if he goes to throw the football. And on second and 10, James wants a quick pop over the middle intended for McClarity. It's tipped and knocked away incomplete. And it'll bring up third down and 10. Well, they tried the quick hitter, the slant pattern over the middle. They were looking to get it to McClarity, their big play wide receiver. He was double covered, and the pass was a, a little high and too much zip on it. Went off his hands. It's going to bring up, as you mentioned, Matt, a third and long situation. And right now you get the, the feeling of a feeling out process as you see the defense here for Midpark. Interesting to see Berea come out and throw the ball on their first two plays from scrimmage. Now on third and ten, it'll be James trying a bootleg, but he will not fool anyone. And in on the stop, number 31, Scott Ward, who is blitzing from...